Please rise for the opening prayer and a pledge of allegiance before we convene a commission to call the meeting. 
Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we celebrate the young adults graduating from high schools, colleges, and trade schools. We ask for your guidance as they enter the next season of life. May they excel and succeed with your protection and grace steering them. Father, next Wednesday we'll celebrate Flag Day. Ratified 246 years ago by the United States Congress, our flag is withheld the test of time through battles, wars, and conflicts. It has been to every part of the globe and was firmly planted on the face of the moon. The flag flies with a backdrop of the skies in heaven. We look towards those skies and know that you created us in your creation. Fifty stars fell from the skies to represent a nation under you. The red in our flag stands for the blood that was shed for our freedom. We are reminded of your son's blood that was shed for our eternal freedom. The white is the purity of a new nation, such as you purify us. The blue signifies the villages, perseverance, and justice. May we always stand for the flag, knowing that our freedoms are not free. Let us pledge allegiance to the flag, our heart to the soldier who defends it, and our lives to you who sacrificed it all for us. Lord, also next Wednesday, we will celebrate the 248th birthday of the United States Army. What started as mostly volunteer group stands today at over 1 million men and women on active duty and an additional 800,000 reserve and National Guard men and women. 24 U.S. Presidents have served in the United States Army and we thank those that answered the call to serve our nation and pre protect our freedoms. May your hand be over our active military personnel for protection and safety. We pray this morning that you grant us wisdom and clarity on the issues that are placed before us. These things we humbly ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. We'll convene the Commissioner's Public Meeting at this time. And we have an addition to the informational items to be added, Director. Yeah, Commissioner, seeking your approval to add uh, information item 4.1, like um, coming mall project. Uh, this item was not uh, previously posted. Okay, thank you. I'll move to amend the agenda. All favor, say aye. Aye, so carry. At this time, we'll ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. Do we have public comment on agenda items only at this time? Yes, Scott. Morning. Good morning. Scott Miller, 822 Tucker Street, Williamsport. This Lycoming Mall thing where we're going to underwrite them. I don't understand why the government is picking winners and losers and underwriting one. Are we going to do the same for each and every business in Lycoming County? Are we going to do that for personal individuals? You know, uh, United Citizens United, the Supreme Court says corporations are like people. Well, aren't people like corporations? Don't I deserve to get a $5 million loan or whatever it is? I don't think we should be picking winners and losers. Thank you. And I have nothing against trying to help a developer out, but it's unfair when you pick a winner or a loser. You know, all of y'all have businesses. You know, where was the government, you know? Okay, thank you. Any other public comment at this time? Well, so the only, Scott, I, when we get to the information item on the mall, I'd like to address your comments. I think that we should have a conversation about it. It doesn't necessarily change my view on it, but I, I would like to address your comments, so I hope you'll stay around for that. I shall. Okay, thank you. Yes, Tom. <coughs> Tom Sheck, Carpenters Lane, Pennsdale, Muncie Township. Um, with regard to informational item 4.1, 
I was kind of hoping that we would see, and there may be, if, I, if I'm mistaken, I'll uh, certainly apologize, uh, the primaries, the principals from the uh, FAMVEST uh, conglomerate here to present us with uh, visualization. I think a lot of people that are here today to hear what has, has to be said about what's going on with this proposed redevelopment of the mall. We're looking for some blueprints, some representation to answer questions uh, outside of you folks. And I don't see that, and that concerns me. There are unanswered questions, the amount of money, as the previous gentleman spoke to, uh, it actually equals 10 million when you talk about 5 million from our cap and $5 million in a loan from Act 13. That's a significant amount of tax money, tax dollars. Yet we don't have any clear answers yet, and the sale is, at least according to the newspaper, scheduled for closure on Friday the 16th. So is a vote going to be done on Thursday the 15th? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But there are unanswered questions about public safety response, impact to Muncie Township, there's no representation from Muncie Township here. Um, I raise these questions, and there are concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Okay. All right, moving on to 2.0, bid opening. Nikki? Yes, we've received one bid for the Lytok Handicap Ramp replacement project from Lundy Construction. The amount of that was $85,200. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, uh, moving on to reports, Cameron. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Presented for your ratification are invoices due through June 14th, 2023, to be paid on June 7th, 2023, in the amount of $1,207,584.21. The breakdown is as follows, with 64, 64, excuse me, 64.87% being funded by the general fund, at $783,411.53. 23.75% is being funded by grants and other sources at $286,755.47. 7.44% is being funded by RMS at $89,889.29 and 3.94% is being funded by escrow at $47,527.92. Okay. Okay, I found this on the web. First. <laughs> <laughs> you found it on the web. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's the I speak pretty so, clear. <laughs> <laughs> You're now on the web. <laughs> I have a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. Any questions or comments for Kaylin? Okay. okay. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, information items 4.1 fan best by coming off. Okay. I do not see anyone from fan best here. They were invited. So I do know the, the one partner. Um, had a, a death in the family and had a good point. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, so I want to make a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I thank both of the constituents and the others who have come. I, I think that both of you have raised legitimate points. The money that we are loaning is money towards the purchase and not necessarily for the development. But I think that we have a right as citizens to know what is going to ultimately come as a result of the purchase. And I think that's the point that Tom's making. And I think it is a, is a, a, uh, a valid point. They must have submitted something for the RCAP, which the five million for the RCAP is, I think, going more towards the development. But I think it's a legitimate point, and I think that we need to get hold of FAMFEST and tell them to do that. To Scott, to your point, Mr. Miller, you know, it, it, is, it's, it is a tough question. 
do we use public funds for economic development? And the truth be told that, uh, you know, although we believe that we live in a private sector only capitalist economy, the truth is that public funds are constantly used for economic development, whether it's uh, in companies that are funded with contracts for various items, or whether it's for uh, the economic development when sometimes projects uh, are so huge or so risky that the private sector doesn't want to go in on its own. I think that what we ought to recognize as citizens is that it's perfectly legitimate for us to collect taxes, or in this case, we're collecting interest when we're doing it. We think we have taken, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, but I think the commissioners would probably agree, we think we've taken the due diligence to protect the money by requiring a first lien on the real estate and a personal guarantee on $5 million that we're sharing the bank. And we're sharing the first lien on the real estate with the bank. And so what that means is that if they do nothing at this site, now the one question that we need to see in the loan documents is that we did want development done by a certain date because we didn't want to see, we didn't want to loan money to have developers purchase a place and have it sit empty for five or ten years while they may be waiting to resell it or whatever and that we have to see whether that's reflected and one of the reasons we're not voting on it today is because the loan documents aren't completed to the satisfaction of allowing us to review them typically when people come before this board for something they sign documents before we do we don't sign documents and give it to them to sign they sign them and they bring them to us and then we review and sign them and and those documents aren't ready and um, so, to your point, Mr. Miller, I think that it's sometimes necessary. I think that we looked at some options. If no one had been stepping forward to do anything with the mall, and it's the kind of situation where with the population continuing to decline in the, in the county, we felt that taking some action uh, would be better than just sitting on a huge acreage of land where buildings are deteriorating. And so we, we tried to be both responsible in protecting the taxpayers' money and saying, listen, if this goes south, we own that land. The county will have first lien on the property with the bank, which means that, you know, the property couldn't be sold or whatever without the taxpayers getting their money back. Uh, and then the same thing on the personal guarantees, that, that we could go after the individuals we loan the money to. People can have different opinions on it, and that's okay. I mean, someone else might come along after us and say, um, you know, no, we would never put public money out. I think that, I don't think what we're doing is so radical or, or outside the box. Um, and in fact, I, we were, Commissioner Metzger and I were talking this morning before the meeting, and I, we were talking about the fact that we have to make sure we track this money to make sure they p make their interest payments and that the loan is paid back in full within five years at the end of five years. Does that, does that give any explanation? I mean, we can have a conversation about it. The chairman is... Am I allowed to read? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what so we want to have a dialogue. Why we, the government, just become the developer for Wycombe County? And we decide, okay, we're going to put a factory here or a shopping center there, apartments here. You know, Scott, I don't see the county having... We're running into the same thing with housing. We have a housing crisis in Lycoming County. When we did our ARPA meetings, we, we found out from the, the, um, the realtors, we have one gentleman in the back of the room who's a realtor, and uh, the developers, that normally there's 650 to 700 houses on the market in Lycoming County, we were informed, and at one point it was down to 175. So the developers told the realtors and told us that we can't afford to develop anymore because the price of goods and because of the infrastructure they have to put in. So what we're doing with $2 million last year and $2 million this year is we're helping infrastructure to get to the front door. The developer then will build the houses. Mm -hmm. So we're helping the developer get the project going. And me as a citizen, property owner, taxpayer, what is my return on our county and state money going to be? Okay, you. that's a good question. So what we hope and the return will that, be... Is it going to be a guaranteed return? No, you but know? what we... What, between the money for... If we build more houses, 
and we get people to come here and live here. We spread the tax base over more people. Part of our problem is that as the population declines, the tax base, the tax needs, whether it's the prison or whatever, stays the same or grows, and we have a shrinking number of people who can pay the property taxes. So what we are trying to do is kickstart economic development so that people will want to come here, will want to live here, and will buy houses, and we spread the cost of living here over more people. Scott, there's no guarantee, but the alternative is for us to sit back and, and literally do nothing and maybe, you know, wait for someone to come and do the mall if, if it's the mall or something else. But see, even that, say we did nothing, they just boarded up the mall. Somebody's going to come along and buy it up in bankruptcy for a song. Mm -hmm. And that person may have a beautiful, wonderful idea of how to transform it into a dynamic revenue generating thing. And they also might put something down there or not do anything with it that we don't want in this county. And we have no choice because they'll own it. But even if you're looking at logistically, looking at this industry, that's going to mess up roads. You have to put more money to building the roads over there by Sam's or by Otto's or by McDonald's. So that's fueling more money into fixing the roads over there. So you might not want a, a warehouse over there. You might not want a, you know, something like that there because more money is going to be put out the end into something like that. So even if it's not a mall, you have to look at something that's not only going to be cost efficient, but that logistically, I did logistics in the Army, so logistically that's going to benefit Muncie, but also that it's going to invite people from the highway that's going to want to say, hey, what's that over there? What, you know, to stop them to go and see what's over there other than Sam. So I get what you're saying, I really do. But, you know, we want to invite people to come tour to come live here younger people to invite them to buy a house to stay but also spend money as well that's traveling on that highway but there's federal and state programs it is, and it's for great that too. okay so all the way down please to the please direct your comments to us we don't want to dialogue with them so scott actually yes. we modeled the program that we did after a state program called business first starts. I think it's business first starts, if I have the name recollected. The problem is the state program's out of money. So what we did is we said, okay, and maybe we didn't share this with you all earlier, we said, okay, is there a way for us to use local money to mimic a state program that kickstarts economic development? The, there was no money left in the state program. So, by the way, to your point, Scott, they're almost buying it at bankruptcy. I mean, they're paying $15 million for a mall that's sold for how much? Uh, the last? 36. Uh, 36 million. So, so it isn't. So, but, so here's another concern we had. Buildings get boarded up. People start going there, you know, hanging out, right? There's all sorts of problems that come with blight from drugs to gangs to all sorts of things. So, so the goal was to try to take the problem before it got worse and use the mimic a state program, which is not a grant program, it's a loan program, right? So they're not getting free money. And basically try to encourage that economic development. So let me, let me prep at our point and then we'll <coughs> answer. Each year the gentleman that owned the mall came back to Appeals taxes. Last year, just last year alone, he received a seventy-nine thousand dollar reduction. That gets passed on you. It gets passed back on me. As each store left, those taxes decreased on the mall, and they get passed back on us. So we have to try to kickstart something down there to make it productive for the county and to make it. Right now, everybody has to go everywhere else, even to go to retail. You know, to go buy a suit somewhere, or besides the clothier, or, or somebody locally, but there's not many stores you can go to to buy things. So, as the developer has expressed to us so far, he hasn't told us a lot of his plans because he can't really negotiate contracts until they own it. 
So go ahead, Kathy. To, to that point, yes. uh, to negotiate contracts until they own it, is there anything specific that will be uh, would prevent them from uh, making this into another New York City where we have uh, a ton of non-taxpaying people, illegals, being brought in because it's been uh, set up as a residential project? Uh, I'm listening to what you're saying. I, I agree we need to do something. It's, it's important. However, if it turns out that uh, a retail is not brought in there or restaurants or whatever it is to attract, as she said about the coming in off the highway, and it becomes a housing development that is on our shoulders again. What was shared with us is a mixed use, um, possibly a grocery chain, possibly a hotel being built there, uh, some housing, middle scale retail, senior, senior housing. Mm -hmm. is, it is it specified, senior housing? They, they, they shared with us that it could possibly be that. Okay, could yes. it possibly be other? They didn't, not, when we asked them about illegal immigration, uh, immigration, they said no. Well, everyone's they're not looking at, they're not, God. yeah, they're not looking at, yeah. You know, every, everyone so, says no, right, right. And, and, and yet the, they're being brought to every every right. city, every town, every county, and I, I, I feel sorry for them, I do. However, it's on our backs again. And if this is what, if that door is left open, when this sale is done, we have no recourse. Right, all I can do is look at the track record of the company. We have a township supervisor here from Loyal Sock who's recently worked on work with them in the last year. They, they developed the uh, stake, what was it, Texas, Texas, Texas Roadhouse and Chipotle's. And they followed through with their commitments <laughs> They're, they're right now in the purchase of doing something in Williamsport. They have a good track record, that's all I can tell you. Yes, John? Yeah. I do commercial real estate in the region. Come and speak at the yeah, podium because we're live no, I, streaming and, and actually all the constituents should speak there. So. Uh, I'm John Beringer. I do uh, commercial real estate in the region with REMAX. I'm a commercial specialist. And I think there's some really valid points that have been raised. and. I think the commissioners uh, understand that. From my own experience, I've worked, I'm not a part of this mall project, so I have no conflict of interest, but I have worked with FAMVEST, uh, and their track record is very, very solid with uh, Texas Roadhouse, with Chipotle. They also purchased the properties down on, on Maynard Street where potentially Wawa is going to be going. Uh, it's very, very difficult in today's market to get developers to step up to help with economic development because of the cost, the rising costs of development. It's crazy. But uh, I've worked with FAMVEST and I know of no one else that could probably take on this project and, and do it with excellence. It's, it's a, it is a lot of money and I realize the exposure that you're talking about. But I, I also want to applaud the commissioners for foresight, just like w with what you did with um, some of the, uh, the digger project. You had to spend some money to make some money. You had to invest in the future, but that created jobs. Jobs create money. Uh, so I think FAMVEST will be doing the same thing at the mall. I have, uh, again, no, I, not a conflict of interest because I'm not a part of it, but I applaud them and I think they're about the only company that I trust that can do it and do it well. They're very connected, they're very responsible. I've worked with one of the developers of FAMVEST for 20 years and I see a track record that's very, very solid and they're not uh, shasters. Uh, I believe we are helping them to kickstart something that could be very, very great. I can't believe, I've been here 25 years in real estate, but 35 years in the community. Um, I never thought the mall would die. It's a different, it's a different model today. Some of the malls are uh, in, in boutique malls in larger metropolitan areas are surviving, but we, I can't believe that ours went down. And so for somebody to step up and invest some of their own money and get a kickstart, um, I know it's a tough tension, but uh, I do applaud FAMVEST uh, for doing what they're doing because not too many people would step up to do what they did. And also the commissioners for foresight, 
uh, to be able to intercept the future and plan ahead. So I, I do applaud the project. Uh, and and it, is, it is a tough tension, like where does the money go? But uh, to help some of these developers kickstart and do something for our region, uh, and, and that's only a few of the projects that they've done. I've worked with them. For example, they relocated the, the uh, uh, National Vet on East 3rd Street. They moved them to Dr. Ecker's building. Uh, that took a lot of money and a lot of investment. But again, who, who benefits the community? So very reputable. Uh, a lot of questions, but I, I'm, I'm supportive. Sorry, I'm rambling on a little bit. But <laughs> Thank I you, John, appreciate your, your insight. insights. Yeah. Can you back? Yes, gentlemen, yeah. all the way back, Boyd Cap, please. We want to thank everybody for attending. This is good. We want to hear from the public. <coughs> Morning, Commissioners. My name is Charlie Bush. Morning, Charlie. Good to see you all. To the public. I'm in a, this is a real funny spot I'm in because I like John Johanchi and his wife very much. We've sold the Bush House property to them. We were told uh, when we sold it that there would be no demolition. There was no plans for any. It turns out that they're talking about them demolishing most of the property except for the mansion. Um, intentions are not necessarily promises. I, as I say, I like John, I like Val, I like R, I like the whole crew, Freddie, all of them. Uh, but uh, the thing that troubles me is that this is all being done. It's a lot of money to hope something happens. Um, that's just not the way I operate. And, and, and I, I'm speaking from experience here. I'm one of the guys that owns the Target Prep Plaza, so I know something about development. And the, the, the ones that we got out of the mall and moved to Target, that's a great plaza. If you look at that plaza, mm -hmm. it's rocking. And we just got a commitment from, it's not signed yet, but it's about to, well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we got something good coming that everybody's going to be very happy about. It will be a terrific addition to that, to that property. I, I do know something about development. I was involved as a, as a young man in the sale of uh, the land to Crown America to build them all originally. I was 27 years old, um, kind of wet behind the ears, but I learned a whole lot in that uh, experience. And, uh, and I've been involved in other things since, many things. Um, I'm just in a funny situation here because I, I just, I wish there was more transparency and I don't see that there's been much transparency for the public to know exactly what we're spending all this money on. I want it to succeed. Obviously we sold uh, Fam Best, the, the home property that we, you know, we sold the farm <laughs> uh, thinking it was going to be one thing and it turns out it, it may not be that at all. And uh, it, it makes us kind of sick. My wife's still working for John and Val. Uh, she's got an employment contract to the end of the year. so. I would hope that the the whole thing would become a little more uh, nailed down quickly. Like, let's find out what we're really doing. Retail has changed, and because we want retail to be there, it doesn't mean it's coming there. Uh, retail has changed uh, globally. It's changed. Mm -hmm. Amazon has taken over the world. We're not going to get it back. It's not the same as it was uh, even ten years ago. It's completely changed, and um, there's going to be a few brick and mortars that survive. I think we have the best of them at our plaza, uh, at Target, um, but um, we'll see. Uh, I appreciate just, yeah, your thank you. Yeah, appreciate your your can. You know what? Um, I think what you're telling us is you want. I've heard you say you want more transparency about what's going to be there. Yeah. And and I think that that is a legitimate question for us to ask. And, and I don't intention, intention is not necessarily something you can lock down. And we we've, we've heard the word intention, intend, intend to do this or intend not to do that. But you know, as soon as you sign on the dotted line, intentions change, and uh, whether they were real or not, um, you can. Uh, <coughs> yeah, things change. Yeah. Uh, and and I would hate to see. All of us, including Fan Fest, get get roped into something that's not a uh, viable 
Fire project. project. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I don't know that it is or that it isn't. Uh, I, I like, like I say, I know I know those guys, and I really like them. I don't want them to fail either. So it's not right. like I'm against or them or this project. I'm not. No. So you know, you raise an interesting point. So when FanFest came to us, and and this is sort of there's a two-edged sword when you get public money, right? If you go to the bank and you get a loan from the bank, you can do a pro forma with the bank, and yep. you can tell them what you're going to do. And the bank may or may not think you're going to be successful, but they're really weighing it on what is your credit, what is your asset, what is the cash flow of the project and everything, and they're going to make a decision. When public is involved, there, there's a level of transparency that sometimes people are not as used to doing. And I think that, that you, you raise a legitimate point. Um, you know, they're getting a loan from us. This is not a grant, just so everyone understands that. This is not a free money. It is a loan and it is secured. It is a secure loan. Right. It is not an unsecured loan. There's a difference between an unsecured loan where we just give someone money and we hope they're going to pay it back. This is secured by the real estate and the real estate is as valuable as what we're loaning them, right? Because the fair market value of 15 million is what it's selling for. So with the first lien on it, with the buyers putting in 5 million of their own, there's 10 million exposure, right? So, but I think what you're raising is legitimate, and and we need to raise that with them. And and uh, I hope that they, you know this won't be misconstrued that I'm somehow against this project. I'm not at all. No. Um, but I do think that there need to be some parameters. You know, the, <laughs> the yeah. pegs need to be sunk down a little deeper than just a hope and a prayer that yeah. this is going to work. So that's, that's all. Yeah, that's sure. Right. <coughs> so. Um, where that new mall is, well, I won't call it a mall, yeah. but your development. Yeah. <clears throat> you had a vision. Yeah. Right? Sure did. did. Did you know exactly every store that was going to come in there when you decided to develop it? We thought we had most of it uh, nailed down. <coughs> so our dear sweet mayor gave them the Coles property free of charge and brought us and tax abated for the next, I don't know how long. That was when you got in. Where Nick's is now was a Kohl's pad. Pam is all done. All of a sudden they pulled out of the project. We had Target on one and Kohl's on the other and some good stores in between. So had things changed? Yes. Uh, but but that's the nature of development. retail right now, especially retail development. Yeah. I mean, I... You took a chance. Oh yeah, you risked. You risked a lot of your wealth. We went through 2008. If you remember what happened in 2008, yeah, we were like holding on to our yeah. drawers, try, <laughs> trying to get through that. And I mean, my fingernails got chewed down to the nub. So it was. Yeah, right. We didn't know if we were going to keep that, be able to keep it. And we had invested a lot of money in that between the time it started and the time it was over. Man, it was that was. I mean, I could write a book. It was you, you, crazy. You did your due diligence, and yet things still changed. Yep. And when you're a developer, you risk money. Yep. Right. Yep. You you try to do your due diligence, yep. Yep. and and hopefully it all comes through because it's not always successful, and that's why we secured. I mean, yep. I get it. The, for the bank to even say, okay, we'll allow you, you know, first lien holder as well. That's that's a commitment that from a bank. It was hard to believe that they did that. That's well, unheard of. I think. Probably would not have <laughs> said we would yeah. even consider. I've never seen a bank do that. But what what's important is that it's a large plot of land, and and it's we're, my neighbor. Right. I mean, we're, you know it. we I I used to farm it. So right. Yeah. yeah. And and that is uh, it's not something that you're going to have. Uh, a, a hundred commitments saying I'm going to be there. Right. Okay. It's a risk. It's that's business. One of the things that I would like to uh, be absolutely clear about, though, is going into this: if, if there is going to be residential put in there, I know there are federal programs in place to subsidize landlords for uh, you know housing Ill the the immigrants <laughs> that are coming here undocumented immigrants, to be politically correct. Um, and uh, I sure hope that that's not going to, that the attention isn't going to turn into that because there's nothing else that can happen with it. I would be 
uh, selling the rest of what I have there and moving it somewhere else if it does. And but I'm we don't. We don't. So want bad it. you won't believe it. I don't. Well, I don't like part of it. We don't, we don't want to, you know, we can say whatever we want to in fear, yep. right? Yep. And and that could, that could change a person's mind as far as in favor of it or the developer not, not doing it. If, I guess my point to Scott, to the rest, is that elected officials sometimes have to make tough decisions. Yeah, well, I come, right? I come from a very political family. I know all right. <laughs> And it's not always fun to sit in this chair. Yeah. And when we see, when we see, you know, we're a county government. We're not a municipality like Tom. Um, we, we have to look at the whole picture. And sometimes we, well, most of the times we base our opinions and we base our, our decisions on that. We hear our taxes keep going up. We see blight in our communities. We, we see, you know, we're even seeing immigration coming here now, right? Yeah, yeah. But we do have to make tough decisions. And one of the problems that we have, and everybody's, well, most people have heard of the three Ps, public-private partnerships. One of the reasons, like John said, one of the reasons why you need public-private partnerships to get anything done is because of the cost. There are so many regulations. Mm -hmm. There are so many stipulations. Um, just the legal side of it all. You yeah. know what you pay for. Yeah. I, I also would say that um, I believe that Muncie coming into this, that bank uh, probably wouldn't had not the county jumped in to participate in this thing. This is a, uh, I mean, I assume that's still what the, plan is that Muncie Bank is going to be participating in this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. absolutely. They wouldn't have been yeah. here if you guys wouldn't have been here. And right. they, right. You wouldn't have been here if they wouldn't have been right. here. I mean, it's all, I, I get it. Right. And now, done that, yeah. so. so I'm going to ask you another question. Do you believe, that, what was the acreage of, it, of the entire mall property? It's 100 and some acres? Yeah, it's 100. 150, something. 40, 50, yeah. yeah. Um, it's for $15 million. It's a deal. Okay, and and so five. That's why we feel, and, right. and trust me, I'm with Scott. I don't think government should be getting involved right. in, in this. Okay, but I can't make the bit. I can't make decisions based on what I always just believe. As long as we're getting a return on our investment, as long as it's secure, I would have probably more constituents say, "Hey, do it," because we need housing, and we do have constituents come here. And call all the time to say we need to stir, you know, uh, uh, get the economic development here in our communities. So yeah. we we look at it; it's a pretty good return on our investment, and and we get our money back. And you know, I, it's it's a tough decision. There's just There's a no lot question. of ancillary things that've got to be considered. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I understand a hundred percent. But there's like Tom brought up emergency services. Uh, who's going to take care of the the ring, the mall road? You know that's there's I don't know how what a couple million dollars just in resurfacing that and their yeah. drainage mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, that's the first thing they said that they told us to address. They have yeah. no were put in in the '70s and they've, nothing's been done with them. And I mean, it's it's a, there's some infrastructure that's really in bad shape. It needs to be fixed. Yep. Or it needs to be shut down because somebody's going to run in across one of those drains and their car's going to disappear. It's, just, <laughs> it's that bad. So, uh, so one other last point for me is that Susquehanna Thruway. Yeah. That was put in there for a reason. Yeah. It was put in there for development. It's put in there for speed, access, and this could be the catalyst that sets it. You talk about ancillary things. Yeah. I mean, maybe Muncie Township doesn't want to grow. I don't know. I you know? can't answer that. Right, but but the but the issue is, is we know that there are exchanges going down that highway that are going to get developed, yeah. and if this is a catalyst for that development, and we're, it's pretty secure, and we have a great developer, right? Now is the time. Let's get it done. Yeah. In five years goes by in a heartbeat, and and we'll see a lot of future growth. There's going to be a lot more 
as you say, that the uh, Susquehanna through whatever it's called is coming over across the, the bridge has made a huge difference just to me going to my dentist in Seelsboro. I mean, it's amazing how much traffic's coming on that already. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more so. We're going to get a lot more traffic up through here. So, like I said, I'm 100% think it's a, it's a great project, but I just do think that it needs to be, we need to look at the fine points and make sure that we got, really, everybody understands what we're getting into. It's not a, a hope and a wish and a, you know. Prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we're really going to have something uh, solid when it's all over with. That's, that's all I'm, that's my, my only point. And I wish them well, wish you guys well. I mean, we, want it, we all want it to work, so, you know. We can ask them when they, when they are here, and I hope it'll be next week, um, to reveal what they've revealed to us, the plans. Yeah. You know, when they sat down with us originally, you know, what they wanted possibly for Best Buy for the building, what part of the mall they were going to tear down, where they want to put the hotel that they talked about, those kind of things. Yeah, I'd like to talk to them about that myself. Mm -hmm. There's, there's uh, the plan for Wawa to go in there where, where our farm was is, is nuts. And um, uh, I guess I shouldn't be talking about that. But there's things that I know that are in the works that are just don't make any sense at all. And I've lived there my whole life. I've been part of everything that's going on down here. Uh, I just, I know how things are. Nobody's going to drive a tractor trailer and, and thread it through down to the, through the arch and back and around to go to a Wawa to get diesel fuel there. And there's, you know, there's some short sightedness coming on. We're putting a motel in, a boutique motel in that area and tying it into the mansion and making it all a, a destination. Makes a lot more sense than putting the, Wawa, up Wawa down by the road, right up against the beltway. I don't know what they're thinking. I can't imagine, but whatever. Anyway, well, thank you so piece, much. So, yeah. 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 Sir. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Tom will revisit you when I get other people to have the first opportunity. Yeah. 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 Morning, Commissioner. Morning. Morning. Um, Jerry Jones, um, 2390 Route 220, Pensdale. Also, uh, remember the Muncie Township Zoning Hearing Board. As you may recall, Commissioner Maravita, we went to class together yeah. back in the winter. Yeah. Um, I addressed this uh, situation way back when we first started talking about getting involved we talked about the uh, remediation of the parking lot things like that and it seems I believe that's been resolved just speaking very quickly is that I think generally as a public and even as a community leaders we tend to want to see we see these things coming in we see a, a model we see this is going to be here this is going to be there um, general idea you know of what's going to be there we just don't see that and I think you have seen that and I was hoping today that FanFest was going to be here so we could address that and get a better vision of it. And if I understand what you're saying, they're probably going to be here next week, and so we can uh, come back next week and maybe address that. I understand their reluctance to share some of their plans because obviously, if I was a developer and I had land and I heard X company is going to come in and do this, and their county-wise is dragging their feet on it, I'd say, well, let me approach that company and I'll do it for them at another location. So they're going to have to hold their hand very close to their to their chest. Um, as uh, you may recall, Commissioner, in the zoning hearing classes that we took, and I also want to remind you that Muncie Township has recently taken back both planning and zoning. Right. So we're no longer under the umbrella of the county. And I was one of my questions today was is there a housing plan and that's already been answered so I'm a little confused as to what the housing is going to be like everybody else but housing coming into that location is going to require a um, change in the um, in, in the uh, zoning of that property which is commercial right now which means it's going to be a, a variance or an exception and hearing from the public at this point the fears of what may be coming in there um, as, as a zoning hearing board member, 
okay, I'm not making the decision today that, oh, I'm not going to let housing come in there. I'm going to listen to the public when it comes up to public hearing. And I'm going to, you know, listen to the developers as they come along. I'm going to listen to, I want to see what other type of subdivision is going to be done to that property. You know, is this going to remain, by the way, Mr. Bush, thank you, Charlie. I mean, that was great. You know, I really think you nailed that down. Are the, are the owners going to be in the management of all properties in the future that's coming in now? How is this going to be split up in the future? Um, Housing-wise, I think you'd have a very difficult time getting it through, um, which doesn't kill the deal. Again, I totally agree with Mr. Bush that retail-wise has gone to the wayside. You know, I think that we can have an opportunity for a few different variations to it. Hotel, when I told my daughter who lives in Philadelphia now that the thing about a hotel up there, she laughed. But I said, no, I think it would work. Um, I don't even know if we need a variance. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I think what we need to get, we keep talking about the transparency. And if you can get to FanFest between now and next week, where they can really do a good presentation to the community. Um, I don't know what next week is, you know. I, I hope I'm around. So the, the key thing is, is that if they can have a presentation that's going to give a general idea of restaurants, even in the, in the, in the article there was something about, interesting, play site. What is a play site? Is it a theater? Is it a playground? A, a casino? I don't know. It was very confusing to me as to what those plans are. Um, and my question to the commissioners at this, at this morning, what's going to remain in the Act 13 money after this? I think you had quite a bit of funds in there. This was $5 million that you'd be putting out. I think you're probably, you're not depleting it, obviously. No, no. I think, I heard you say, Scott, recently that you had about $62 million in surplus monies in the county? We, we between what well, they are, but right now we have about it. I think the last I had heard it was about $24 million in the Act 13. Okay. okay. Um, I, I would like to see this. I can get that. I mean, okay. our, our, our financial director has that. It's closer to 16. Is it yeah. down? Okay. Well, this because is, of commitments. Oh, because we're some, yeah, we, we have made some commitments, absolutely. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is after the yeah. 5 million to yeah. the free and fast? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I heard you talk a lot about, I heard two different things. Population is moving out of the county, and we need housing. Um, and you know, build it, they will come, they will stay, whatever it is. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm convinced our population is not decreasing. Okay, I'm not either. Yeah. I don't believe I think it is. It's, I think it's increasing. I really yeah, yeah. I, don't I mean, I, I I've knocked on people's doors that in the last mm -hmm. primary, people just moved here. People from Texas, mm -hmm. people from California, people that are new here. They they, they love being here. Yeah, I, I agree. You yes. know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people in the community out there. A lot of people, and I'm I'm doing the subdivision in Muncie, so I've sold some houses. Yep. And so I understand the movement into the, not only the county, but the township. And the township is in a position for a great deal of growth, which I support completely. And I support the development of the mall. I hate seeing what's being, what is there now. I just need more confirmation of what's going to be going on. And on top of that, um, I, would, I would really like to see the county consider, and even our municipality, doing some no cost-effective housing for young people. Yeah. Um, not to rent, but to own. Now, I'm not, I'm talking like, a, like what's a Bailey from a Wonderful Life? I'm not talking like that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, um, no, I'm not a savings and loan, but I, I, I see people buying my land to build $500,000 houses. You know, where is the young people today able to buy a $250,000 house that's not on the market? You know, can we build a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house? Can we do a a subdivision and tie into sewer and water? Can we utilize this money that's sitting in the county and in the township to do so? Um, but outside of that, again, I, I would encourage the commissioners to keep on considering have FanVest here next week to really give an open presentation as to what we'll be looking at on zoning variances. That's my main concern. Thank you very much, and I uh, look forward to the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go, a, a oh, couple points. <laughs> you, you, you made it a very important point that this is all subject to zoning, okay? And as you pointed out, the county no longer is engaged in zoning with Muncie Township. So the people there 
are going to are going to control their destiny with the zoning and the planning. Number one, and then number two, the Act 13 money. It looks like we may not be able to use Act 13 money on yeah, a, yeah, on we a loan. Be, we may be using either. Utilize money, so. We may be. We just found this out. Like within the, le we went to the highest levels of, of uh, no state that. government, and so uh, if that case, there's there's other funds that are at various places that we, uh, you know, we can we can look at. But um, I don't want to say definitively because I don't make that decision alone. The three of us would have to make it. But certainly, from what we are researching, it looks like that might be problematic. Okay. Um, but uh, the, the one thing about the um, population loss, the reason why we can say that anecdotally it doesn't feel like we're losing population, when, Senator, when they did the last redistricting, Senator Yaw's district practically doubled in size <coughs> geographically. So in other words, when they do the census, they change to get the same number of people, whether it's in Congress or whether it's in Harrisburg, each representative has to represent the same number of people. And so where you used to be able to get the 250,000 people from Senator Yaw's district here, to get 250,000, they had to go out to here, right? And so while we may not want to believe that the population is declining, unless the census is wrong. They did, they did the census during COVID. Right. Worst possible time they could have done it. Right. But, but the census then would be wrong all over the United States. And it may be wrong, but the reality is that we have to realize that the population is changing. Otherwise, they would not have changed the representation. I hope it grows. I hope it grows. That's what we all hope. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't say definitively. None of us can say if it's growing. But, but all the indications are that it's declining. Right? Our enrollments are declining. You pick up the newspaper, they're closing elementary schools, right? Because the birth rate is going down and the death rate is going up. And in rural Pennsylvania, in rural America, the death rate is going up faster than in some of the other places. So that's, that's part of it. So we just have to, you know, do, do, as you said, we have to follow the zoning, hold the public hearings. And, um, but I think we also need to try to be welcoming as a community. <clears throat> when we talk about immigration, look, I'm a child of an immigrant. My grandfather came here and he was a dark-skinned, Sicilian-looking Italian person. Did he come legally? He came through Ellis Island. Legally. He came through Ellis Island. Most of the immigrants, look, I don't want to get into it, it's, you know, but, but my point is that if we're not welcoming as a community, people won't want to come to live here. You know, people won't want to come here to live here. So I think we want to try to just keep that in mind, right? We're all children of immigrants at different times, at different times. Some families have been here for more generations than others. I suspect yours have been, you know, but literally my, my parents came off the boat. My grandparents came off the boat. Hey, ma'am, you, you're next? Yep. Yes, come on up. Just one quick question. Yes. Act 13 monies, because um, I've been kind of like back and forth with our supervisors regarding the, um, what is it, the American, American, American uh, Rescue, Rescue Plan. Plan. Yeah. Funds. Um, will that be used, this can't be used, what monies you have for that can't be used for that. Um, but what other funds are you looking into that could possibly replace the Act 13 monies that you had wished to appropriate? Oh. Give me general fund. Yeah. Or, or we have funds that we've accumulated at the RMS yep. from the landfill. Three plus one. Okay. Three plus one. We have funds that we have. We have to have this discussion. Yeah. Okay. And, and but it's a fair question, and you, as a taxpayer, have a right to ask. It. My, my main concern is the, the loan is secure. We've done our due diligence to make sure of that. That's my main concern. That and transparency from the developer, what he, he can divulge to us before we make a decision. And I think we all deserve that. I, I know you did your due yeah. diligence and I understand that. I'm, I'm all for the development. Yeah. I mean for this development. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to be stuck in the mud. Right. right. And right. We, we want the transparency that the public wants. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and, because and, and everybody's, everybody deserves that. Yeah. Right. If, if we don't have transparency when it comes yeah. to variances yeah. and zoning, uh, I'm going to be inundated with public comment. That's Absolutely. what I'm going to have to listen to. Right? Yep. Um, and I want to avoid that as much as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? <coughs> Good morning. 
bit high, isn't it? Good morning, Commissioner. Denise Hartley, Pensdale, Muncie Township. Um, I've shopped at the malls for years, as everybody has. Um, shopping has changed. I work at FedEx, and we have more and more going through. People sit at home, and you know they're ordering off the computer. I'm not saying that you know they're not going to go down there and shop. Um, I would like to see something come, something good to Muncie Township. That would be great. I mean, that mall is you know beside it being an eyesore and the road around it is awful. Um, I think, you know, I just, as people have reiterated, we just want transparency. Um, I'm planning on coming next Thursday. I hope FanFest is here. I know they, you said they had a death in the family. Family does come first mm -hmm. and, you know, with everybody and I understand that, but I just, you know, I just want to see, you know, because I, I hope they're not planning on putting more stores in there because I don't, I mean, people go up to the crossings. I mean, if that mall failed, I don't understand why, you know, more stores there now would, you know, succeed. But who's to say we don't have a crystal ball, but I just want to see transparency. Thank and you. I appreciate your time and everything involved in it and your answers. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Look we'll forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Ma'am. Yeah. Good morning. Lori Butler, South Williamsport. Commissioners, I think that the mall situation needs to be dedicated to our youth. Why don't you all think about putting in a facility that has indoor ice skating, you know, gymnastics, bringing in ice hockey, doing something for the community. I am totally against any kind of housing, whether it's, you know, housing, renting, hotels, motels, totally against it. I have a lot of distrust, and I just think that this needs to be dedicated to our youth. There's not enough around here for our youth. So that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for the first time? Tom, I'll give you a minute. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Well, thank you once again, Commissioners. I don't think there's anybody in this room, and there's a large contingent from Muncie Township that's here today. I'm very concerned that the supervisors aren't here. Not surprised, but again, I'm concerned. I know that you've done your due diligence. There is no doubt in my mind. We do not feel, I think, and I speak for everyone that this is a bad project in conception. We need to get that blight eradicated one way or another. That being said, transparency, and I've addressed this with at least one or two of you on numerous occasions, if this goes through as the concept has said so far, we don't have any idea as to public safety provision. We don't have any idea as to what happens uh, once all these jobs that are going to be created, and let's be, let's be real, once the construction phase is done, a lot of those jobs are going to go by the wayside because their construction jobs are going to be created, they're going to be transitory. Mm -hmm. Then what do you have left? Is this guy going to come back in a year or so and say, well, you know, things aren't going as well as planned, I can still pay back my $5 million or whatever it's going to be in, in, the, in the time frame that you all have allotted, but I need a tax break. So I come back for a lower assessment than what has already been done times two. And I sat on the Board of Supervisors through both of those tax assessment chokeholds. How, how low does it go? Do we have a guarantee that he's not going to come back and try to negotiate through the process a lower tax assessment? So where again does that fall? On the backs of county and township taxpayers. Thank you. I have a question for you. When, when the mall was at full steam, when it was going, mm -hmm. all the stores it had down there, what emergency services, were they the same emergency services that are down there now? Yes, and they are decreasing, as you well know. Yes, okay. And they're decreasing so across the county. I'm not pointing fingers. The volunteer services. The, well, that and, and uh, the, the demand on law enforcement. Uh, the demand on law enforcement is going down exponentially since the mall basically shut down. But that's a whole other issue is so emergency they, services. They were in place, and they still continue to be in place to an extent. They're, they're, they're in place on paper, that's correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Scott, one more minute, please. I'll be as quick as possible. Okay, thank you. Scott Miller, once again. From what you're telling me, if the county has $10 million into a $15 million project, are we getting a seat on the board of directors of that company? If they have all these assets over on Maynard Street and wherever, why do they need to borrow from the county? I mean, I can't conceptualize if I have $20 million of assets, why do I got to come to the county for five? Shouldn't a bank be able, like, you know, hey, you know, put up these other developments into this and we'll lend you the money, you know? Uh, in the past, I put my personal house up to start a company, you know, and all of y'all own businesses, you know, I've put up my house to start a company. This was 30 years ago. It didn't work out. I, by tooth and nail, kept from losing my house. And, you know, I just don't see it. And then the man, the planning board, how come they haven't gone to the planning board and said, well, you know, like this is our idea, at least our idea, conceptualized idea, so that that board could say, okay, you know, we're in favor of that, we'll give you residential. We don't know that they will even be able to get the residential and you're talking about putting in the residential. And I'm very disappointed that this fan vest developer didn't have a plan B for somebody else to come in and give us an adequate presentation of what their intent was to be and it's going to come down to you have 24 hours to sign the paper yeah, yeah. you know that sounds like a used car dealership tactic to me <laughs> so just be clear we are not going to be pressured by time to do this People are coming to us for a loan. And if it means the closing has to be postponed, that's their problem. I'm dead serious about that. Because as an elected official, I'm not going to have the public feel that we're doing something under the gun or with a gun to our head, right? And, and whether they're here today or and next week they're here, at least me personally, I, I want you to know that, Scott. And I would echo his comments. Yeah. We're not going to loan them $5 million because gonna, they come right. at the last minute and yeah, say... No one's going to pressure us into doing anything. Yeah. We're I mean, going to make sure that the first Thursday all, county do. meeting closing on Friday. Where's the 24-hour, you know... Okay. I mean, I think you got to have 72 hours before you're allowed to get married so you can... <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you all. You, you all have raised really good points. You know that from experience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. answer that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for attending. We appreciate the comments. Uh, you're welcome to be here next week. Um, we'll continue to work on this throughout the week. Um, yeah, the documents keep going back and forth for advisements and, and re, re, uh, they re, re, uh, being revisited for clarification on many issues between the attorneys. So. I, I, I want to add one more thing. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Charlie mentioned about 2008. Okay, really difficult time in business, you know, for, for businesses. It was crushing and it was it was uh, difficult. And and if we had Jason Fink here, and um, he would tell you that there was no activity. None. But coming co uh, County had no activity. If we were losing uh, population. Uh, we were losing uh, developers. There was nothing going on. And then you start to develop a culture, and it comes from leadership, whether it's Mayor Campana or uh, Tony, Tony Campana, uh, searching for businesses, Coles, right? Um, there was a culture change of leadership. They said, hey, we need to do something. We, we can't accept life. We can't accept uh, the decline of, of our values in our property. You know, we lost a lot of uh, values, uh, uh, assessment value in, in this county because nobody was doing anything. And so when elected officials decide, we're going to do something, 
and we might be a little bit more progressive than the ones prior. But it's not without the vision. And that vision doesn't just come from us. It comes from people, Scott, that say, hey, this, this county is going to put $4 million into economic development. Bam. As soon as that came out, guess what happened? Three major developers are coming in. This, by no means, is the last that the county will be approached for business opportunities. We have one knocking on the door right now. So you decide. You know, you, you want to stay stagnant? Great. Then the next county, then the, then the state college that is growing. No matter what anybody wants to say, state college is growing quick. And we don't want our uh, sister counties to uh, outperform us. That's not the role of a county commissioner or a role of a township supervisor. You want success. You want a good future for your, your people, for your children. Opportunities. That's how you get them. Whether you like it or whether you don't. Some people are going to take advantage of it, and some people aren't. And, you know, I see a separation of the middle class. I can't afford, I went out to buy three 2 by 12 by 12s pressure treated, $40 a board. How the heck are you going to build a house for $150,000 anymore? You're not. You can't. All right? So, I think to me, this project is a great project. I'm not saying it doesn't have, you know, I don't, uh, all the issues or all the questions aren't answered yet. Go ahead. I just want to say, I want to argue with you about one thing. You said in 2008 nobody was doing anything. Well, we were. Yeah. <laughs> we, were we were putting our heads down and, and literally signing away everything that we could sign away to keep that project going and to, to make that Target Plaza uh, crossings happen, and we did. I mean, it was the scariest of all the things I've been involved with. That was the scariest thing I was ever involved with because we were facing a very real project of losing it all and some other stuff too. So uh, we, we were still working on two thousand. And we want to thank you for that because uh, without that plaza, yeah. the county would be even worse off. Yeah. So we want to thank you for that. But I'll just close with with the Kalmberger Farm. Here's a good example. We bought that. We bought that for fill for the landfill. We we turned it into an industrial park now. Uh, the Board of Commissioners here had the vision. We brought a developer here with the help of the Chamber from the state of Indiana. He took a big risk coming to Lycoming County. It was between us and Lycoming County. It was between us and North Carolina. And he chose our county because of the people that work in this county. He loved the work ethic. It was the people. It was the people. And he wanted to hire them. Now, he has 150 people down there. He wants to expand to 225. Oh. We're getting ready to sell a, a, a sign an LOI for another business that wants to go over there and build. And we have interest in more of the property over there. So as we developed that, we had to put money up front. We had to have the vision up front and put the money up front, a lot of money, to get that developed. And now we see the, the fruition of it coming together, where businesses are coming there, they're liking the location, they want to put their business here. That's more jobs, that's more uh, taxes for our county in the sense that people are moving here. Um, you know, this building alone, when we sell this building to federal, Verizon Federal Credit, they're bringing 100 corporate jobs to this building, downtown Williamsport. Those, a lot of those people are going to be hired from out of the area. They're bringing in them or transferring them in. You have to have vision in order to, to, to expand things, to grow things. And we feel that's what we're doing here. And, but we do need more transparency. We need to have more of what their plans are. And... Uh, you know, it is a blade of property down there. We hear constantly, we wish we had them all back the way it used to be. It will never be what it used to be. No way. Amazon, you said it, Charlie. Amazon has, has changed that um, metric forever. And uh, so what we do is bring something here that, and, and as John said, this is a proven developer that does what they say they're going to do. And, and you, know, you have to have trust. And we're trusting with the right plans that we move into the right direction. Thank you for being here. We look forward to having you here next week. Thank you. Okay, let's move on.
All right, moving on to personal actions. Um, I'm going to take over both Jessica and then Mike. You're welcome to stay if you like, or you can leave if you want to. It's up to you. It's your choice. And hopefully, we won't put you to sleep. <laughs> Uh, five point one commissioners uh, seeking your approval on the uh, following personal actions. And before I, I hit uh, attachment A with, with those personal actions, I'd like just to highlight the recruiting effort um, with our county HR office. Back in January, we had about sixty vacancies. In March, forty-eight. We're down to 26 here in June. That's what I understood this morning. On, uh, how he shared that with us. I mean, that is that is tremendous news that that we're down in the in the high 20s now for for uh, and basically the prisons basically at 100. Well, we're down. We're only short four CS. So four. Okay, so awesome. we're close. We're yeah. close. All right. Um, again, and seeking your personal actions. Um, these actions are, are uh, conditional offers of employment subject to the successful completion of a background check and all other employment conditions as outlined in attachment. In the uh, Department of Public Safety, Skylar Corbin, telecommunicator two, full-time Replacement, 2137 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, anticipated transfer date, June 11th, 2023. Um, in pre-release, Gabriel Adriatis, did I get it? I don't know. I think I did. I think you might have. Uh, resident supervisor one, part-time replacement, 1810, uh, not to exceed 1,000 hours, anticipated start date, June 12th, 2023. In procurement, Susan Goletsky, procurement and grant officer, full-time replacement, $45,591 per year, 75 hours per pay period, anticipated start date, June 19, 2023. Uh, in assessment, Nikisha Kramer, field data collector, full-time replacement, $18.57 per hour. 75 hour per pay period anticipate anticipated transfer date june 25th 2023 in the prison shane bastris correctional officer one full-time replacement 20 dollars per hour 80 hours per pay period anticipated start date july 2nd 2023 in the prison brandon young correctional officer one full-time replacement 20 dollars per hour 80 hour per pay period Anticipated start date, July 16th, 2023. Uh, in the prison, Tim Horning, Correctional Officer 1, full-time replacement, $20 per hour, 80 hours per pay period. Anticipated start date, July 2nd, 2023. In the prison, Mark Steets, Correctional Officer 2, full-time replacement, $21.48 per hour, 80 hours per pay period. Anticipated transfer date, uh, July 9th, 2023. And finally in the prison, John Wagner, uh, Correctional Officer 1, full-time replacement, $20 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, anticipated transfer date, July 9th, 2023. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve a second. Any questions or comments on these? And again, we want to thank uh, every department working as a team to get more people hired and get these positions filled. Appreciate everybody's efforts. So, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Security. All right. Thanks, commissioners. Move on to action item 6.1. Uh, commissioner, seeking your approval to the amendment uh, to the agreement with Center County. Um, the amendment was due to revised language in the agreement to uh, meet P Corp insurance requirements. Uh, this is a 2023 budget. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. Second. And that's just a standard uh, out of county in May. Yeah. All clear, side. Aye. Aye, so carrying. 6.2 seeking your approval on the lease agreement with the Lycoming County Housing Authority. 
Uh, this is just a renewal of our month-to-month -month lease agreement for MDJ Prize facility. Okay. A motion? I move to approve. A second. All in favor, sign. Aye. 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 So Gary. Uh, Six point three. Seeing your approval on the list of contracts that I approve for the month of May. There's only two of them, I believe. Okay. Late month. Yeah. Late month. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All in favor, sign. Aye. 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 So carry. All right. Uh, Nancy, still on the phone? No, they're gone. All right. Uh, let's see. Commissioner seeking your approval uh, for the agreement with County of Jefferson. Um, this is the Jefferson County Juvenile Detention Center, and it's uh, a standard contract we have in place uh, to use when required for the placement of juveniles. Okay, and it is a 2020, 2023 budget item. Correct. Okay, so I'll, motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. Sal. Hi, Sal. Thank you, Mark. Thanks Thank for you. hanging with us. All the worries. Commissioners, this is just a uh, request to use uh, the county, a portion of the county allotment of our liquid fuels uh, to purchase a pressure washer utility trailer for pre-release. As you're aware, they help out and assist with uh, maintenance and um, cleaning of the county owned bridges. Uh, we did go for uh, three different quotes. Uh, unfortunately, Bestline is the only company that can actually do what um, pre-release needs them to do. Um, everyone else couldn't meet the requirements they were looking for. Okay. And it's coming out of liquid fuel. It's funds. coming out of the county portion of liquid fuels. It is an allowable expense. Um, I confirmed that with uh, PennDOT before we even started on this process. Okay, great. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to a second. All in favor, sign. Aye. Aye. Commissioner? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, you. Commissioner. So, Gary. 6.6, .6. Jerry. Where are Jerry? Commissioner, it's Jerry Kennedy, CIO. Uh, before you today is a uh, support and services renewal to Melillo Consulting for a portion of software used in our data center, uh, as well as the management of our mobile devices cost of $27,496.19 through May of 2024. Uh, this, is, this agreement is uh, acquired through CCAP and uh, agreement with other counties across the state. It is a 2023 uh, budgeted item. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. That's it. All in favor, say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, Jerry. Commissioner, comment. Anything? No. You anything? Oh, other than that, the the uh, County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania filed. Um, what do you call that? An amicus brief. An amicus brief. Right. That's that's right. Right. And. Yeah, I just was looking for it. I have it in my hand here that uh, they agree with the county commissioners and uh, are supporting supporting uh, our decision to challenge the controllers and uh, basically uh, stating that that Leach ruling, you know, uh, usurped the power of the commissioners and it was wrong that we, I mean, and, and I've always argued this, that it is clear, the code is absolutely clear, right. that that the, the, the commissioners have uh, the authority and are are the responsible parties for the financial or, or fiscal affairs of the county. So this is this was good that they they filed that brief. So, so it's actually what they're saying is that the system that's been in place in this county for the last 40 years is a legitimate way to do payroll accounts receivable and uh, accounts payable, general right, and general ledger, and uh, not that we're challenging them, but that she is challenging us to thank you, Commissioner, for bringing that to and, our attention. Right. Yeah, this was an article that was on uh, Mr. Boji, back of the back of the room here today. Penn Live, um, we saw this last night and, and uh, saw that CCAP had taken this action. 
Thank you for your article, Mr. Bogey. Okay, next uh, Wednesday is Flag Day. Let me ask you to fly your flags proudly, and, and uh, there's a ceremony at Penn College. Did you ever get any punk? Yeah, a little minute. So I think it starts at 6.30, if I, don't re if I recall, 6.30 at Penn College. And um, so everybody's welcome to attend the ceremony up there at the school, and and they put on a nice, uh, nice program. We look forward to being a participant. You know, I, I'd like to add one other thing. Uh, a constituent. I was talking to him last night, and this is totally in another direction, but we, nonetheless, he was sitting at a. He and his wife ordered. Uh, drinks from Wendy's and and meals and the two drinks the the uh, milkshakes came out and they put it on the counter and they were waiting for their food and six young men decided to challenge him and just go up and take his drinks and now this. I asked him, well, what did you do? He said, well, I stopped them. He said, but it sure was scary. You see, when I came into office, you had a different culture that we were not going to tolerate anything in Lycoming County. We were going to be hard on people. And then that changed, right? When there's no consequences for actions, it lets people do whatever they think they can or want to do. Now this guy is my size, right? And there were six of them, and his wife was scared. And But he stopped them himself, right? We need to change this. We need to change the attitude that's going on with these young people today, and it has to be within our schools. There has to be more discipline. If there's no discipline, there will be chaos. It's coming tomorrow. Now, if they wanted to, they could have done something else, waited for him outside, right? We can't accept that in rural America. We, we can't. We have to be a little bit tougher. Uh, bring that up. And well, I, and I'll correct you on one point. I agree with you, but I'll correct you on one point. The schools are limited what they can do. It starts at the home. It does. It starts in the home. Well, starts in the home with the discipline. Okay, well, you, you, you can say that all you want, but with two working people, yeah. that school is where they spend most of their time. But it's not always two yeah. working people in the household either, though. Yeah, it comes down to where mm -hmm. you're responsible for your kids, yep. and, and discipline starts in the home. Mm -hmm. Starts in the home. Okay. Teachers are, are limited what they can do. Yep. I'm sure there's many teachers By out choice. there. I'm sure there's a lot of teachers out there who would love to discipline more than what they can do, but they're they're restricted by their school districts. But I guarantee it's I the can Department tell you, of Education that I'm saying, right, you're right, not the teachers. But the, the discipline, you're absolutely right. It shouldn't go on anywhere, but it starts in the home. Because all parents don't yeah. discipline kids, and if the parents don't allow the school okay. to do it, inside, oh, one, one second. So, <laughs> any other public or uh, commissioner comments at this time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. It shouldn't go on. It shouldn't go on anywhere, let alone here. Right. right. So now public comment, Mr. Stout, and then if you'd like to say something. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. I don't want you to cut you off. No, you're fine. Commissioner. Okay. <laughs> Larry Stout yes. from Montgomery, representing the Clinton Township Volunteer Fire Company. I am proudly wearing a Lycoming County Resource Management hat, which was given uh, to us in the fire company a year ago during an appreciation banquet. That they had at the landfill and I know they appreciated the fire company last night and last Saturday in the last six days there have been two major fires at the landfill while we were all last night over a hundred firemen were out there fighting a fire that could have been very very actually both of these fires even though last night wasn't as, as bad as the one on Saturday. But I, I hope you understand, a fire in a landfill goes down. You could have a Centralia situation if you do not deal with it. And, and 
our chief, um, Todd Winder, noted that in the past, now we're talking 30, 40 years ago, when, when they were uh, much cruder landfills, okay, it would take two or three days to put out these fires. Uh, but the fact that you have a fantastic group there, and, and um, Jason should be tremendously uh, uh, commended. You know they have even had people called out last night in the middle of the night that were on vacation that showed up to help on that fire last night. Um, I, I just stop and think for a moment. I, and I'm just saying this because I think it needs recognized. And the fact that we have people that do that sort of thing but also we need to re realize that imagine there wasn't a volunteer fire company can you imagine what the cost would be to put out a fire like that I mean we're talking probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of man hours and, and equipment etc cetera, etc cetera, that would be required they were putting on now get this I, I, I was just a stunned I'm trying to where did I write that down it was a lot of water 2,500 gallons of water a minute. Think about that. 25,000 gallons of water a minute mm -hmm. to get that sucker down. And we're talking, I mean, they drained uh, that, that tank. <laughs> they have that, it was like 500,000. I think they, they calculated they put somewhere around 300,000 water gallons of water on that. Yeah, it was uh, 300,000 gallons of water, and I forget how many. 2,500 tons. 2, tons of dirt. I was just looking for yeah. 2,500 tons of dirt. And you're right. I mean, we see the effects of what forest fires are doing in Canada. Mm -hmm. oh. Here locally, you, know, you can't walk outside if you have mm -hmm. you know, breathing conditions. I had a friend last night went for a 40-minute walk with his dog, a neighbor. Mm -hmm. He come home, his whole clothes smell like smoke. His wife says, you smell like he's just smoked mm -hmm. a pack of cigarettes. Um, mm -hmm. What these guys do, and these women do, for, I mean, like you said, over the weekend, they left graduations. Mm -hmm. They left what they were doing at home and ran into that fire. And like you said, it could turn into a centralia if you don't get mm -hmm. to it right. Mm -hmm. and, I think, and treat uh, it right. not to interrupt, yeah. but one point that uh, needs to be brought up, a lot of the RMS employees on Saturday were not even called to come in. They just showed up on their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah they saw that, and they just came in. And the same last night. I mean, that started last night around 11 o'clock through the night, and you saved like people vacations. I mean, these people are so dedicated. We're so thankful for them. And, and even the public needs recognized because there was a group. I mean, I I saw the smoke too, but I didn't think anything about it because there's a lot of smoke around. Yeah, there's a lot noticed. of smoke right now. <laughs> but a um, and so 911 was saying, yeah, they didn't really pay attention until somebody said, I see an orange glow. Well, an orange glow doesn't go with smoke, so that's that's what actually set it off because no one really realized how serious that was and how it all came together. But I just I just want to again make a plug that anything that that the commissioners can do for volunteer fire companies, please, please. I mean, they need help uh, in every way possible. I don't know what incentive, what kind of things, but just keep that in your. Uh, it, they, they, you know, unfortunately, they're they're just uh, silent servants that don't get the recognition they should, and and the whole reason I joined a fire company is simply because I just thought I I don't know what I can do, but I want to do something, and I wish that more people understood that uh, to don't to call nine one one, which again, don't get me started. That I I I've asked um, responders. I said how many. How many out of a hundred calls would you say are really serious, honest to goodness emergencies? They think maybe one in a hundred, which means, you know, people are just misusing a service, thinking that they can, and they can, but someday you're going to get. I mean, I I fear for that day that you're going to call 911 and then there's nobody going to be able to answer because we've drained the everything, uh, all the resources. So anyway, that's just my, my, Thank my, you, Larry, my for call. Thank you, to our attention and once again and, and recognizing it because they do deserve to be recognized. And if you know somebody who works in volunteer services, the fire companies, please thank them and support them whatever way you can. Yeah. You know, Larry, the, 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 that 
volunteer fire company and the others that responded there's certainly no reason why the county or the landfill can't make a contribution to them because um, you're right if they weren't a financial contribution if they weren't there we would be having to keep a fire department at the landfill basically uh, so you know I don't know which other fire companies responded well let me co let me comment yeah. though the, the, the landfill is very um, generous shall I say in cooperation right if we need something I mean some like I can't even think of anything right off the hand but but uh, I think in uh, like maybe for the 911 ride it, we need extra signage or something they they have things out there we borrow so it's it's a very 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 good relationship I, I mean that sincerely uh, no I recognize the fact that Jason that. is also a fireman helps too right. I mean the guy knows his stuff so yeah. He, no, and he identifies with them. I don't mean that as a reflection that people don't appreciate it or anything, but the reality is that it, it costs money, as you said, to keep these companies mm -hmm. going. Okay. And uh, yeah. one more. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Uh, I, I just got this from Senator Yaw because we con I contacted him last night can regarding we, the act. Can we finish up public yeah. comment for this? Okay. Anybody else for public comment? Yes, Mr. Miller. Uh, Thanks. Hello again. Morning. Scott Miller, 822 yes. Tucker Street, Williamsport. Yes. I have COPD and heart condition. Yesterday I had to go in, close the windows, and turn on the AC. And something I thought about, I was watching the news, and they said the United States sent over 100 people up to Canada to help fight the forest fires. They have forest fires the size of Vermont. Why aren't we trying to help them more? You know, I mean, yeah, I think we're on friendly conditions with Canada, and it seems like it would be in our mutual benefit to have states going up there and sending what we can. You know, I mean, I know we don't have enough volunteers uh, uh, as it is, but, you know, it seems like some places, you know, they want to complain, but they don't get off their tushies and act. And I really wish not just us, like Hillman County, but Pennsylvania, New York, the East Coast that's being affected by this, did a little bit more than, no, we sent to 100 people. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Tom? Morning, Tom. Good. Tom Adams, Williamsport. Um, pride goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. That's Proverbs 16, 18. And in Zechariah 7, 12, they made their hearts like flints so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Therefore, Great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. And I guess we can kind of, I kind of look at our founders as former prophets because they were so in tune to the Word of God. That's why we have a great nation that, that was birthed and uh, brought freedom and light to the world because of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that freedom to, pre to promote that. And we see the darkness coming around. Um, and Tony brought up the discipline in the schools. That's course one thing what I'm running on but um, and the discipline the parents have to be disciplined like I shared to, with you before uh, it was told to me that they'll come in sometimes cursing the uh, cursing the administration or teachers and you cannot have that 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 has to stop and that that's the type of thing that parents aren't going to be allowed to be get away with that stuff and um, to for schools to be able to it's up to our community to take control of this stuff and to stop the nonsense so our kids ha can have a healthy life and a chance at uh, living in a, in a decent world. Um, as our founders also looked at, uh, and I don't, I don't like bringing this up because a lot of people don't want to hear it, or some people don't want to hear it, the uh, controlling group of LGBTQ and all that. Um, 
there isn't really a whole lot of people in that movement. Um, they just have a loud mouth and a lot of uh, anger in them and uh, a lot of money behind them. But because uh, they, they don't even like the, the people that are live in that lifestyle that speak out against the grooming. You know, they don't want to have anything to do with those people. They won't rep be represented in the news. Um, but when they take the, the rainbow as a sign for their movement, that's an affront right to God. Because that rainbow was, was a sign from God, a promise to, from God that he would never flood the world again with, with water. Now, I believe that this is now a sign from God that he's going to destroy we know the world's going to be destroyed by fire but I think America's, America's going to be destroyed by fire if we continue down this road allowing this rainbow to be used as a direct affront to God now it's not water that he's concerned it's going to be fire that's the opposite and it's being used in the opposite way and this rainbow is Kids love rainbows, and most people do. But now you've turned it into something that, that's just abhorrent. And it's sad because uh, that's not God's intention. And the rainbow is just is, uh, also the representation of different spectrums of the light. And um, when you interfere with the light of God, you interfere with judgment. I mean, you're going to be real call on judgment. Um, I believe the Lord laid this on my heart to let people know. I don't know. I mean, I'm no special prophet. I don't see things in the future like that. But I read the Bible, and I know what the Word of God says. And I know He doesn't fool around with, with uh, judgment. He doesn't fool around with sin when the country continues to turn their back and allow the voices of craziness to control and to intimidate people. I'm not going to be intimidated because that's the one thing that group likes to do. They like to intimidate people, shut people up, and they threaten them. And they're, that's, they're the ones that are more violent than any group in the, in the country. Um, but that's just basic facts. And I'm not out here to, to spread hate or fear, but just people so they repent. You know, anyone can repent. And uh, a person that has been, you know, transgendered or whatever, and a lot of people are being fooled. The kids are being attacked with this stuff. And that's why they use the word gay, and they use the word, uh, they use the rainbow to draw kids in, you know, to make it think it's, it's, a fine, it's a fine way to live, and it's not. But anyone who wants to repent from that, I have open arms. Even if people are struggling with that stuff, you're, you know, I'll talk with anybody. I don't have hatred for them. But don't, you know, we just don't, we have to stand up for what's right. Because when you talk about property values, things will drop if our moral values drop. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Tom. Anybody else? Okay. Commissioner. So, regarding the uh, use of Act 13 money, so he said uh, they contacted one of the principal authors of the Act 13 language. His comment is that using the funds for loans was never contemplated in the act, meaning no one thought about using funds in that manner. What does that mean? We also checked with the PUC, which collects the funds and distributes them according to the formula in the law. The PUC also keeps records of how the funds are being spent based on the reports sent by the municipalities and counties. The PUC does not oversee how funds are used or make any determination as to the legality of the expenditures. So, contact your solicitor. <laughs> right. Well, so the point is, we might be able to use Act 13, and if it's yes. challenged somehow, then it would be, then it would be up to it. And uh, quite honestly, on a loan, I don't think anybody's going to challenge it. So, so we might be good to go there. That's a that's an encouraging. Yeah, well, email. That's the question. Isn't a loan just a different kind of investment? Yeah. Yes. What would you say, Mister? Mister? Well, would they release? Will them? they release the funds? Well, no. We have the funds. No, no. Under the control of of the treasurer. 
Oh, would other elected officials in the county possibly say, no, we don't believe no, that's legitimate. We're not going to release them. Uh, well, we, we don't know if dispute. that's going to happen. Right. We, 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 won't, don't, but we won't cross a bridge until we get there. Okay. But our goal is to try to get, because um, there are other people, right, who have to sign that check, too, besides the three yep. so people we'll sitting here. So work with the solicitor, work with everybody involved, Right. work with the developer, um, look at the documents, make sure that all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted, Right. and uh, invite them here next week, um, get some transparency, and if the, if the closing has to be delayed, it has to be delayed. Right. We're not going to rush into anything uh, overnight, that's for sure. Right. Okay. Anything online? No, there is not. Okay. We have a, completed our, our meeting, so we will be adjourned until uh, Thursday, June fifteenth at ten a.m. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.